Colonel Jacobo Arbenz Guzman, Spanish pronunciation, September 14, 1913, January 27, 1971, nicknamed also the Big Blonde, Spanish, El Chilon, or the Swiss, Spanish, El Suizo, for his Swiss origins was a Guatemalan military officer and progressive politician who served as president of Guatemala from 1951 to 1954. He was previously the Minister of Defense from 1944 to 1951. He was a major figure in the Guatemalan Revolution. Arbenz was born in 1913 to a middle-class family son of a Swiss-German Jacob Arbenz Gravely and wealthy Guatemalan Octavia Guzman Caballeros, and graduated with high honors from a military academy in 1935. He served in the army until 1944, steadily rising through the ranks. During this period, he witnessed the United States-backed dictator Jorge Ubico use the military to brutally suppress agrarian laborers. As an officer in the army, Arbenz himself was required to escort chain gangs of prisoners. This process greatly radicalized him, and he began to form links to the labor movement. In 1938 he met and married his wife Maria Villanova, who was also a great ideological influence on him. Another strong influence on him was José Manuel Fortuny a well-known Guatemalan communist, who was one of his main advisors during his government. In 1944, Ubico's highly repressive policies resulted in a popular revolt against him, led by students which led to his resignation on July 1, 1944. He left General Federico Bonsvitz in charge of the military junta heading an interim government. However, Ponsitz remained in power by force, and this led to a general revolt by several civilian groups and progressive military factions led by Arbenz on October 20, 1944. In the elections that followed, widely seen as free and fair, Juan José Arevalo was elected president with 85% of the vote. Arbenz was appointed Minister of Defense and played a crucial role in putting down a military coup in 1949, a situation that resulted in the death of Colonel Francisco Javier Arana, the other major military figure in the government. The Arevalo government began a highly popular program of social reform, aimed at ending Guatemala's feudalistic labor system, which had been in place since the government of Justo Rufino Barrios. After the death of Arana, Arbenz contested the presidential elections that were held in 1950 without any major opponent, and defeated Miguel de Goras Fuentes, his nearest challenger, by a margin of over 50 percent. He took office on March 15, 1951, and continued the social reform policies of his predecessor. These reforms include an expanded right to vote the ability of workers to organize, legitimizing political parties, and allowing public debate. The centerpiece of his policy was an agrarian reform law that granted cultivable land to poverty-stricken peasants in an attempt to end the system of debt penage. His popular policies ran afoul of the United Fruit Company, UFCO which had major investments in Guatemala thanks to the generous concessions granted to it by the government of Manuel Estrada Cabrera and Jorge Ubico. The UFCO lobbied to have him overthrown, and Arbenz was ousted in a coup d'état engineered by the United States Department of State and the Central Intelligence Agency. It was led by the brothers John Foster Dulles and Alan Dulles both of whom had major interests in UFCO. Arbenz was replaced by a military junta which eventually handed power to Colonel Carlos Castillo Armas. Arbenz went into a painful exile through several countries, where his family was gradually destroyed, his daughter committed suicide, 
and he descended more and more into alcoholism. He eventually died in Mexico in 1971. Early life, Arbenz was born in Quetzaltenango, Guatemala, the second largest city in the country, in 1913. He was the son of a Swiss-German pharmacist who immigrated to Guatemala in 1901. His family was relatively wealthy and upper class, his childhood has been described as comfortable. His father became addicted to morphine and began to neglect the family business. He eventually went bankrupt, forcing the family to move to a rural estate that a wealthy friend had set aside for them out of charity. Jacobo had originally desired to be an economist or an engineer, but since the family now had no money, he could not afford to go to a university. He did not want to join the military, but there was a scholarship available through the Escuela Politécnica for military cadets. He applied, passed all of the entrance exams, and entered as a cadet in 1932. Two years later, his father committed suicide. Military career, Arbenz excelled in the academy and was deemed an exceptional student. He became first sergeant, the highest honor bestowed upon cadets, that only six people received from 1924 to 1944. His abilities earned him an unusual level of respect amongst the officers at the school, including Major John Considine the U.S. director of the school, and of other U.S. officers who served at the school. Arbenz graduated in 1935. After graduating, he served a stint as a junior officer at Fort San Jose in the capital Guatemala City and later under an illiterate colonel in a small garrison in the village of San Juan Cicatbucas. While in San Jose, Arbenz had to lead squads of soldiers which were escorting chain gangs of prisoners, including political prisoners, to perform forced labor. The experience traumatized Arbenz, who said he felt like a copetaz, that is a foreman. In 1937, Arbenz was asked to fill a vacant teaching position at the academy. Arbenz taught a wide range of subjects, including military matters, history and physics. In 1943, he was promoted to captain and placed in charge of the entire corps of cadets. His position was the third highest in the academy and was considered one of the most prestigious positions a young officer could hold. In 1938 he met his future wife Maria Villanova, the daughter of a wealthy Salvadoran landowner. They were married a few months later. Arbenz stated that his wife had a great influence on him. 8. It was through Maria that Arbenz was exposed to Marxism. Maria had received a copy of the Communist Manifesto at a women's congress and left a copy of it on Jacobo's bedside table when she left for a vacation. Jacobo was moved by the manifesto, and he and Maria discussed it with each other. Both felt that it explained many things they had been feeling. Afterwards, Jacobo began reading more works by Marx, Lenin, and Stalin, and by the late 1940s was regularly interacting with a group of Guatemalan communists.